Okay, in this video we're going to install MySQL on Windows 10 and we're going to use Sigwin to do this. Um, in the description of the video you should see a link to uh, my GitHub account and just click on that and it should bring you to this uh, readme that has instructions for this video. And so we'll walk through step-by-step -step installing MySQL on Windows 10. So the first thing it says, uh, ensure that you have Sigwin installed. And I do have a video where I go over that. So this video assumes that you've walked through that video and that you've installed Sigwin uh, on that, uh, in that manner. And so we'll go on to this. If you haven't done that, I encourage you to do that. And then we'll move on to step two. So it says start the Sigwin terminal and CD to the Sigwin installer directory or folder. So we'll double click to get Sigwin started. And from there it says to CD to Sig drive C users John Sigwin installer. So John is where uh, you want to replace your username, uh, re replace my username with yours. So we're going to CD slash Sig drive slash C slash you and you'll notice if I hit tab here see how it completes so that's a really handy thing when you're using the command line and you got this bash autocomplete going on here uh, so with my user and then the Sigwin installer okay so now uh, under Sigwin um, the C drive is mapped underneath this or it's mounted to this mount point and um, then so that everything after here will look familiar in terms of the window windows file structure uh, okay so we're there it says next run the command to install mysql so we're going to actually be running the uh, sigwin installer from the command line here and we're going to be specifying the packages as a command line argument and this will minimize our interaction with the user interface of the actual installer so it's kind of convenient that way so we have uh, setup.exe and we want to specify the packages mysql and mysql-server and quiet mode uh, I believe that just minimizes our interaction with the installer so we'll hit enter to start and we'll accept this And we can see that it's installing the packages automatically. We didn't have to select them because we specified them on the command line. And from there, that should be, uh, that should actually be it. So now back at the Sigwin terminal, if we type in which MySQL you'll notice that it gives us the path to the MySQL executable. That's the MySQL uh, command line client executable. But the first thing we have to do after this, now the installation is, after this install, we have to set up the database. So that MySQL has some tasks that uh, need to be done. So you just type in MySQL install. And if again, if you say you type in IN and hit tab, it'll complete that installation or that uh, command for the install and we'll hit enter and it'll do its thing here for a little while so I'll just continue on here for not too much longer a few more moments bit longer yet and we're done and so next uh, we'll start up the database if I can click that right there we go uh, okay so we'll type in mysqld 
underscore safe, and then an ampersand, which will throw this job into the background. And it'll echo some stuff out to standard out there where the database is being set up. And you can just hit enter to get past that. Um, and now we can actually log in to the MySQL uh, database Oops. as the root user. And you can see that we can log in to the database server. So we'll exit that. And next we'll load the time zone files. I'm not totally sure that this is necessary uh, for our development needs. I know I've come across issues though in the past when I haven't had this and I can't quite recall what the reason was. So I think it's just a good idea to have, um, you know, to have these loaded. It'll allow MySQL to operate in different time zones when you're working with dates. So that's, it might be helpful to you and it's easy enough to install. So actually I'm just going to highlight this. There we go. And we'll copy it and I'll paste it in here and we'll hit enter. So what's happening is there's this program that's going to take this, um, this, all this time zone information from the operating system or from Sigwin. And then we're going to pipe it to the MySQL uh, command line client and we're choosing with the user root and we're choosing to use the MySQL database. So then we hit enter. And this will do a bunch of stuff here. Uh, these warnings are okay, nothing to worry about. Okay, and now seven test connection to server. So we did test that, but maybe we'll go in there one more time. So we'll log in as the uh, root user. There's no password. And actually, I mean, it. this is something, some credentials and passwords and that are no doubt really important to set up when you're in staging or uh, production environments. Um, I'm not that, uh, I don't think it's that important when you're working in your dev environment. It's just going to be me. So I'm just going to use the root user here. Um, so here we can, uh, we can do a select now. It shows us the current time and we can show databases. There's some databases and then from there we can exit. And finally, so up here is how to start the database server. When you want to shut it down, we just use MySQL admin, the root user again, and then we just give it the shutdown argument there. And this will be a few moments on here. I'm not sure if it's my virtual machine that's kind of slow or what, but it'll just take a couple moments. And from there, now we're done. So that's installed. So now we have MySQL, the MySQL server running on Windows uh, via Sigwin.